hello and welcome to this video all about problematic. If you're new here, my name is Christina, also known as the Tech Savvy Science Teacher, and I film videos about different ed tech that you can use in your classroom. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, don't forget to click that subscribe button and give this video a like if problematic is helpful in your room. So let me go ahead and give you a brief little overview of problematic. Basically, like it says here, it's a database of questions. You have questions from exams across the country, and it's a free and a paid subscription website. So I'm going to mainly focus on the free aspects, but I will mention any paid aspects that there are. I've always used just the free net program in my classroom, and it's been completely fine for me. But there are some things that you might be interested in in the paid version. So let's go ahead and log in and take a look. So the first thing that you'll see when you log in are all the different places that you can select questions from. Now this is where you can notice that some of them require the school subscription, so require the paid version. But there are so many that do not require the paid version, and I think that's fantastic. So let's say I am looking to do the Science Olympiad questions. I want to make, you know, I want to practice with my students, maybe challenge them a little bit. So I'm going to select Science Olympiad, and I want the 2007 edition. So I'm going to go to this genes questions, um, I should say category, and then you can see there's a bunch of different questions here. So maybe I like that one. Um, I also like this one. And notice I'm just pressing the Add button here and selecting the ones I want. I could also favorite this question. I can view the problem details, which will then give me some information about where this problem came from. And I can also flag this question if I feel like there's something wrong with the question. So then you can go back. And the nice thing is you can select again from here. Or if you're like saying that you want to mix it up a little bit, you can then go say, okay, now I want some New York Regents exam questions. And I can go in and pick some questions from here as well. So you really have the freedom to mix and match from so many different sources of questions that I think that you will be able to find everything that you need. So once you've selected all the questions you want, we're going to go to Arrange. Now here, you're able to drag and drop and move these questions around. You can just hit scramble if you want them in a completely different order. You can pick them and drag them into your own order. There we go. That you want, if it's easier for you to view them as a list because you want to see a little more detail, you can definitely do that. And then you can also include some directions if you want to include that as well. You can also add multiple parts, especially if you want to add multiple sets of directions for each part. So all you need to do is click Add New Part, and you can tell it where you want to add it. And then you kind of will see what's in each one. So let's say I like this, and, and I'm thinking, okay, this question should really be in Part 2. I can just grab it and drag it down to Part 2. And then I have the ability to set directions for Part 2, and then a separate set of directions for Part 1. You could have as many different sections as you like. Then we have the format option. And what this does is basically format. So we typically have two columns. That's the setup it has. You can talk about if you want to include an answer key, obviously for your own purposes. You can then set the header, what you want it to say at the top. You have some choices in the font. What I really like is the ability to change the multiple choice questions because I find that if I can match the style that my state test uses, it's just more helpful for my students. So I typically do that. Then you have some additional features that are only available to subscribers. And then the last one is your page setup. So you can choose your page size and margins. Last thing you're going to want to do is make it into a PDF. 
So what it'll do now is it will format it into a PDF for you, and then you can click Download PDF. Share with students is something that you can do if you want to share this more as like a practice test, and you can copy and paste the link so that someone else can view it as a PDF. You can also directly put it to your Google Classroom. If you need some formula charts, say for science, um, let's say you were using, okay, so I mean, there's not really a formula chart for biology, but let's say I want to use this, I was doing physics questions, I can add this in and I can talk about where I want this chart to go into my PDF. And then the advanced is something that you will see in um, the subscription based and it's connecting to GradeCam. If you're not familiar with GradeCam, I'm going to put a link in the cards and in the description below. It's a fantastic way to grade multiple choice questions and even some short answer questions. And you don't have to worry about hunting down scantrons. Kids can use pen, pencil, marker. It doesn't matter what they use. It's fantastic. So then we have two more options again that are paid versions only. So once you're done, you will then be able to have this in your, sorry, in your list of tests. And you can see all these different things. You can create different folders if you want to organize them. You can see all different things on them when you created them. Is it locked down? Is the public link? All these different things. So if you are interested in the paid version, what you can do is check out this play area. And that allows you to test out some of the paid version features for free. So if I wanted to, once again, let me just quickly um, add some questions so I can show you what this will look like in the paid version and what extra things you're able to do. So the arrange is just the same as it was before. You can do all these things. It also gives you the option to write in a new problem if you have one that you want to add yourself. Formatting, again, very similar. You have all those things. And then we have the make a PDF. Once again, same thing as the free version. But here's where we get into some of the paid options. So export allows you to export it a couple different ways. You can put it as a slideshow with each question as its own slide. You can turn it into an online test or worksheet that the students have to log into to complete. You also have the ability to download it as a PowerPoint, smart notebook file, Mimeo, any of those things. And if you have any one of these LMS services, you can then export it as a file and then you can upload it as an LMS um, as a quiz in your LMS. And then the other paid feature is a connection to um, GradeCam. So you'll be able to see the summary of how people have scored. You'll be able to get results, especially if you had the students take it online. You can view it by student. You can view it by problem. You have a lot of really nice options here. So last thing is, if you want to check out the plan, I believe it's like $1,000 if I'm not mistaken. Let me try to pull up the form here. But it is school-wide. So it's not, you know, it sounds like a lot of money. And I do think it is a lot of money. But if this is, if your school's already paying for some other service, you might be able to convince your school that this is actually better. Yeah, it's $995 per year. So this will cover all teachers, practically all subjects, and then you also get all those advanced features as well. So I hope that this has been helpful in educating you about what Problematic is all about. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I would also love to hear a comment as to how you create your tests and quizzes and worksheets and things like that. If you have any other questions or suggestions of some other things you'd like to see, leave those for me as well. And I hope you have a great year. Happy teaching.